Look, I know, I, I, I was busy, all right. Hey, for, for the real fans out there, let's hear you all cheer my name. Go ahead, come on, Mirsad. Mirsad, yeah, there we go. I like that. that's what I was talking about, yeah. <laughs> What's going on, Wolfpack? My name is Denari Kulf, and welcome to some more Bosnian Reacts to you. Geography Now, Romania, this time. I know, I'm very late. I was, this is a very late episode, but uh, life. <laughs> let's just leave it at that. And uh, anyway, let's get let's just get right into it. Let me put my headphones on. That'd be embarrassing. <laughs> Starting the video, I'll be like, hmm, why is there no, no sound in this? But uh, yeah. so Romania. So anyway, this Romania has always been just just some somewhat of an anomaly here in uh, Europe in general because uh, all of the Latin speaking countries are Romance countries. The name Romania, if you can tell, Roman something you know very Roman about it, but uh, all the Latin-speaking countries are mostly in the in Western Europe. And all of a sudden, you look all the way in Eastern Europe, Romania somehow managed to stay as a Latin-speaking country, it wasn't uh, overtaken by the uh, Slavs. Even though they have a lot of Slavic-based uh, words, like one person in my comment section said, Lesh, which is, a, which is, you know, apparently a corpse in Romanian, which means corpse in Romanian, means corpse as well in uh, the South Slavic languages. That's exactly how we say it, L-E- Sure, Lesh. So that's interesting. So it was technically influenced a little bit by uh, Slavic, but for the most part, it's a Latin-based uh, language. Mostly attribute people mostly attribute uh, uh, the mountains of the Carpathian Mountains of Romania to be one of the reasons why their language survived and wasn't overtaken by any like Slavic-based languages uh, or anything. And we have the. <laughs> The strange for me, it's like uh, personally me. Uh, no offense to all any Romanians, but it's like the strangest country in all of Europe to me, because it's just some, just all the Latin speaking countries, R Roman speaking countries, all the way to the west, France, Spain, Italy, and all, <laughs> and just completely geographically detached from them. It, there's Romania. Uh, German-based languages are all in like one place, like the Northern European, uh, like in Northern Europe, Germany and the uh, Sweden and, Nor and Norway, and uh, all the Slavic-based languages are somehow in the southeast of Europe, in the northeast of Europe, but then there's just pff, Romanian, <laughs> which is, you know, Hungarian and Finnish too, but they are not technically Indo-European languages, but Romanian is an Indo-European language. For me, it was just like a, a pretty strange place that's how how best i can explain romania uh this is not where this this country is not full of roma i'm pretty sure he's gonna mention it or gypsies as we call them because uh the gypsies or roma he's, he, i don't think he's gonna mention it in, in this uh episode but they are actually from uh northern india from uh, what dna sources can, uh, can tell uh they don't they're not uh, at all you know uh, in common with uh, modern day Romanians, even though there is quite a bit of Roma or Roma people, gypsy people in Romania. They thought they were from Egypt, therefore they that's how they, they got the name gypsy. But that's a huge misconception. A lot of Bosnians have that misconception about Romania as well. But no, there, it's not a pl place full of Roma people or gypsy people. It's a it's a place full of Latin speaking people. We'll get into the Vlachs later. The there's a story behind them as well. But let's just go ahead and start the episode. Oh, by the way, uh, a lot of people have been saying in the comments section before we start uh, that uh, I constantly talk too much because I want to prove how you know a smart ass I am. But that is not the case at all. I assure you, I'm just very passionate at uh, explaining stuff. If anybody knows me in real life, I explain stuff all the time. And I wanted to be a professor at one point. To, now you can see it that <laughs> that I've changed my mind, be mostly because professors here in Bosnia are paid absolutely shit. So everybody told me, no, 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 don't be a professor. Trust me, dude. So go go be a YouTuber instead, and or go work at home. <laughs> it's a better idea, and uh, yeah, probably is a better idea. But uh, that's a different story. Romania. If any of you have ever had a family reunion? Sorry you about talking like too to much. Have a Romania show up is like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah! yeah, it doesn't matter if you're in a cold, dark castle or a tropical beach with margaritas. If you're Latin, you're part of the family. They have tropical beaches in Romania? <laughs> I'm pretty sure they don't. <laughs> no! 
Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. No, I'm not gonna make any Dracula oh, it jokes. was referring to Spain. Do not call these people <laughs> Slavs, and no, unless they actually are I didn't. gypsy, do not call Romanians gypsies. Yeah, we hate that, and they only make up like 3% of our population. Yeah, and don't call us gypsy. We prefer Roma or Romani. That's too close to Romanian. Just stick with gypsy. That's how this whole mess got started to begin with. Well, Europeans gave us that title gypsy by mistaking us for Egyptians. Okay, he Dude, did. What do you want to be called? This. Roma or Romani? <laughs> ah! So, yeah. Anyway, let's look at the globe and see where Romania is. On the map, like I said, we? gypsies, northern India, most likely. Romania is unique because it's not only positioned in a weird. They were spot, nomadic and they came over isolated. here in the it's Balkans. Like the easternmost point of Latin influence. Huh? It's quite a story, and it all starts in Europe. Romania is the 12th largest country in Europe, located at the crossroads between what is considered Central, Eastern, and Southern Europe. So it's hard to give it a single regional title. But for what it's worth, Central, it Eastern, Southern other Europe, countries and the Black Sea to the east. The nation is divided into 41 counties with their own city councils. However, to make things easier, the counties are kind of clustered into eight development regions, which don't actually have any administrative power, but rather tie groups of counties together to facilitate economic activity. Culturally speaking, though, Romania is also kind of divided into three general historical regions. Moldavia, Wallachia, and the well-known Transylvania. Yes, Transylvania. We'll talk about yep. that later. So, uh, anyway, uh, Wallachia, this is uh, where the legendary tale of, uh, of, um, of Vlad the Impaler uh, came to be now uh it is said technically uh the story of dracula the vampire story s claims that he is uh, from transylvania because uh dracula is based off of vlad the impaler which was a prince of wallachia he should technically b be uh, situated in wallachia instead of transylvania that's a common misconception of people that have a vlad the Imper impaler which was a uh, pretty skilled uh, uh, statesman at his time. He was pretty brutal. You know, he put spikes through people's, how should I say, hole, through the other hole. Yeah, it made quite a force of those. And there was like rumors of him actually drinking people's blood. Therefore, the story of the vampires uh, arose. So he wasn't from Transylvania. He was the Prince of Wallachia. Yeah, he was actually a pretty skilled statesman, like I said, brutal, but efficient. And uh, he, they called him Vlad uh, Dracula, it, because in Romanian, Dracula would mean the dragon, technically. So Count Dracula is technically uh, semi-dragon, like draconic uh, vampires. Dude, that is freaking... Do I, I think I uh, uh, thought of a new race here to put in fantasy games, <laughs> but that's besides the point. And this is uh, Moldavia. Uh, of course, it, it refers to also the, uh, the plains up here of Moldova. And uh, yeah, is going to in, later or later on in the uh, video we're going to see how they uh, sometimes want to unite into one one country because but they have a little bit of a problem with the uh, trans Transnistria over here. Man, I can just sit here. I can just sit here and, and you know what? I should just I should just take over geography now and just <laughs> make my own videos and I, I can just explain the countries on my own. But especially European countries, I can talk all day about European countries. It's only the, you know, obscure African countries that I'm not really knowledgeable of. But uh, European countries, yeah. A little bit Eurocentric, but I personally think European countries are the most interesting uh, places in the world. Now, oh man, later on I'll, I'll talk more about uh, Romania. But I mentioned Vlad the Impaler there. Later, the capital Bucharest, located in the south, acts as its own county mm -hmm. and, of course, has the highest population of any city. Here, you can also find the largest international airport, Henry Coanda International. Otherwise, in the second largest city, Cluj-Napoca, in the northeast, you can find the second busiest airport, Avram Yanku International. And, of course, in the third largest city, Timisoara, you can find the third busiest airport, Tirayan Buya International. Otherwise, anything shipping related usually comes in from the Black Sea, with the largest port, the port of Constanza, which is also the largest shipping port on the Black Sea. Keep in mind, just a skip mm -hmm. away is Snake Island that Romania and Ukraine had a small dispute over that finally there any resolved snakes? in 2009. Ukraine won. Dang. Anywho, the country has a wide, extensive rail and road network that reaches every neighboring nation. Disputably, nice, good. the busiest road being the A2 and A3 roads, linking the Black Sea to Bucharest and further to Hungary traversing the Carpathian Mountains. Otherwise, Romania is unique because the country in itself didn't always look the way it did. There's Moldavia, not to be confused with Moldova, although Moldova does get its historical name 
name from that area. There's also Wallachia and the infamous Transylvania. That's right, Transylvania is in Romania, but it should belong to Hungary. We'll get to that. <laughs> now, Romania is sorry, Hungary. Not shy of making landmarks and sites of interest that stick out, and they take many aesthetic. But yes, uh, historically, Hungary has uh, controlled the region of Tran of Transylvania for a pretty long time. Oh, by the way, Transylvania, the name Transylvania literally means uh, th like over the forest or through the forest. It's referring to uh, the, how the Carpathian Mountains make a thick forest between like Wallachia, Moldova and uh, Transylvania. Because Silva, Silva is like, I believe, Latin for a forest or something. So it's technically through the forest or over the forest. Accused from multiple people groups, you'll see buildings that look French, buildings that look Slavic, some that look German, a lot of those. some that just kind of do their own thing. For what it's worth, though, hey, here Brad are some Village, of the top spots you guys, the Romanian geography suggested we mention the Palace of Parliament, the National. Hero oh, oh, uh, let's go back to that. Uh, the the Palace of uh, Parliament. There uh. are some of the top spots you guys, the Romanian geography suggested we mention the Palace. Yeah, so the Palace of Parliament is one of the largest. Uh, I think it still is the largest uh, uh, building in the world when it comes to square meter usage. Now, this was actually built by uh, by Nicolae Ceausescu during the communist years of Romania, which were pretty bad. I gotta I gotta admit, way worse than Yugoslavia. Actually, Yugoslavia was pretty good communist years, but when it comes to Romania, probably I would say even the worst out of all the communist states of uh, Europe, uh, because Nicolae Ceausescu he was one crazy son of a. I'll tell you what, because he did go a lot uh, to like North Korea. He took a look at North Korea and said, hey, we could do this here in Romania and uh, absolutely just blew the uh, country's budget on this uh, uh, palace of parliament here. Now, this costs like one fourth of the country's like budget or something or a half of the country's budget just to create absolutely like bankrupted the country making this giant uh, palace and the and the romanians even to this day only use up like 25 percent of it like one fourth of it is only used because it's so enormous they don't know what it what, what to use the rooms for and uh well, they have a cool looking palace at least <laughs> that's the that's at least one thing kind of ceausescu did that's pretty cool i don't know even though he was pretty brutal and gunned down at the end and i say he deserved it but yeah long story about him as well but he ruled the country with absolute uh he was absolutely relentless but long story. parliament the national heroes mausoleum the gates of iron constanza casino mm -hmm. the silly cemetery of maramures this pole thing salina turda this ancient dacian site the king Decibel ah, yes. statue the tunnel of love this really cool bookstore this ancient temple Sibiu is like the most transylvanian city you can get houses even have eyes on them so many churches like these scary including one that was built into a cliff and the tallest wooden church in the world brashov and rashnov also have those cool citadels and churches they even have those Hollywood signs on hills. There's so many castles, many of which are said to be haunted, but the most famous one probably being Bran Castle or Dracula. So that's yes, it, right? The famous Dracula Castle, which is not even mentioned as the home of Dracula in the book, and it was written by an Irish guy. And Vlad the Impaler was just an inspiration of Dracula. He wasn't actually Dracula, and he never even set foot in this castle. Will you shut up? Don't give away our secret. This creepy gimmick makes us a lot of money. By the way, guys, <laughs> this is Jason. He taught me motion graphics. Does he it? He launched the entire channel. He's a vampire. <laughs> Oh, uh, bad. Yeah, lots of creepy haunted sites going on. And it doesn't stop at the buildings. They have entire forests that people are afraid to step into. Okay, we're back. Uh, sorry, I had some connection problems there. Brings us to... Pretend nothing happened. <laughs> Romania is kind of like the land of legend and electricity. They have so many myths that they move forward with the age of energy. They were actually the first European country to have electric streetlights, and they even have a Prometheus statue holding a lightning bolt. For what it's worth, though, the nation is about evenly divided by plains, hills, and mountains, with the mighty Carpathian Mountains, the third largest chain in Europe, dominating the north and central mm -hmm. parts. Here you can find the highest peak, Mount Moldovano, in the hook of the southern Carpathians. From there, there's one little detached cluster of mountains in the northeast known as the Apuseni Mountains, which effectively makes the hills of Romania kind of look like <laughs> Pac-Man. And in these Apuseni Mountains, you can find Skarishwara, which claims to be the largest underground glacier in the world. These mountains are essentially formed by the smaller Carpathian micro fault line within the larger Eurasian tectonic plate. This is also what explains how even though Romania is inland, it has small distinct areas of geothermal activity, such as the mud volcanoes of Berka and small hot springs in the west side of the country. Between these mountains and hills, you have the Transylvanian Plateau, where you
you can find the largest non-shared river fully within Romania, the navigable... River. However, on the east no, and south the sides, you Danube have the Danube is, so you're, you're cool. Plains, Romania. The longest river shared with oh, yeah. Bulgaria, the mighty Danube, flows into the Black Sea. Along mm. the Black Sea coast, okay. you get the flattest and incredibly beautiful Danube Delta area, the second largest delta in Europe after the Volga, and is considered the most well-preserved. This area in itself is a biosphere reserve and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is the largest continuous Sorry. marshland in Europe and has over 1,600 plant species alone. This whole flat marshy area along the coast is also known as the Dobruja region. Here you can find what is considered Dobruja, the largest lake of Romania, known as Lake Razelm, which is actually a freshwater lagoon known as a Liman. This lake actually used to be connected to the Black Sea as a salty lagoon, but in the 70s, a thin land barrier was built to keep the Black Sea out, which has now changed the ecological conditions drastically, making it a freshwater lake overall if you zoom out it's a relatively lush european country now uh the danube here as you can see flows this way and creates a delta here which is a nice swamp land which is what i think uh, also used for uh, keeping armies out of uh, romania because romania is very how should i say uh, attractive for other <laughs> armies because it's a very useful piece of land to own especially for this region right here that i'm indicating that is the uh, danube gap it is the only because moving armies through this area of romania would be very difficult because the Car carpathian mountains is one of the reasons why the soviets had to you know get real real close up here to anchor themselves into a, like a buffer zone of the carpathian mountains because if you can't tell Everything is flat right over the Carpathian Mountains. So they really needed the Carpathian Mountains, but they also needed to uh, close this gap right here. Because this is the only really gap that armies can walk through, you know, easily and unhindered. unhindered. But while as over here, of course, you have the giant Danube and you have a large swampland, which would definitely like slow down any incoming army. And of course, the Carpathian Mountains will uh, do the same. But right here, the gap... That is very important to shut off. This is why the Ottomans and the Russians really needed to hold on to uh, Romania. Now, Romania the only, had to really balance kind of powers in the in the past, or they're balancing like right now with a uh, with a uh, Russia, because at some points they would uh, ally with Russia to help them free themselves from the Ottomans, and at certain points they would ally with Turkey to help uh, keep Russia away from them. So the, really, they had to like balance between powers and because of the the area the strategic area they are in they they're in uh, an area that really that they really need to where they really need to balance uh uh greater european powers so yeah romania strategic country and with that it's time for my triple shot espresso break noah usually comes in for this segment <laughs> mine but too unfortunately, he's still out visiting family so how about we add some pumpkin spice to this order shall we get it Pumpkin. Oh, he's still here. <laughs> In the shortest way to summarize it, Romania started out as a shaky post-communist state that many people didn't know how to interact with. Essentially, joining the EU in 2007 really got a lot of those life. funds. All right, so we just had a revolution. Uh, communism is gone. We'd like to join your party. Here's our application. Hmm, everything seems to be in order. We do have some sprucing up to do. Oh, okay, just hear me out. We're going through legislative reform. Get it sprucing uh, up. Opening up a free market and just approve what's dedicated. Trees. We even put visa regimes on countries like Russia and Turkey. You have to wait 14 years, you won't be Schengen, and you have to use your own currency. Woohoo! I'll take it! Hey, what the f***, Romania? You totally ditched me back there! If he's in, I'm in! And that's how lots of money started flowing to Romania. Today, what Romania about Bulgaria? is the largest <laughs> electronics producer in Central and Eastern Europe. Due to the highly fertile land, Romania has lots of cheap and abundant produce. Cool looking, cool looking haystacks, you'll find these as well in Bosnia all around. This is not just in Romania. In the harvest season, you will see huge stacks of things like cabbage and watermelon. I love watermelon with lemon. So do you, Paul. I know you do. Oh, yeah. They are one of the most I don't like watermelon. wine producing countries in the world, usually around 12th place. Oh, in the let me some wine. Production. Theoretically, Romania has the third highest capacity for geothermal energy on continental Europe after Greece and Italy. Ahem. I said continental. You're an island and not even fully in Europe, okay? Otherwise, as a very 
very lush and forested nation, Romania is home to numerous animal species like foxes, hares, bats, bears. Remember good old Wojtek? Well, Romania has the largest population of brown bears in the world outside of Russia. And keeping up with the spooky theme, Romania has quite a few haunted or cursed natural sites. The two most famous ones probably being the witch's pond. Okay, that's a bad witch voice as well. Where scary things are said to happen. That's pretty good, actually. The animals won't drink from it or go near it. Yeah. Okay. It's probably poison. Hoya. You know we have a Ho rainforest where I'm from? <laughs> yeah, it's called the Ho rainforest. And Hoya Forest, labeled Funny. the most haunted forest in the world where people have seen everything from monsters, ghosts, UFOs, and even a portal that leads to an alternate universe. I don't believe it. How can you have monsters and UFOs in the same place? So anyway, yeah. Food! Some top dishes that you guys suggested include maize porridge, plum dumplings, these really plum cool dumplings. ground meat rolls, placenta pastries, placenta, <laughs> plas, placenta, yeah. tokitura stew, jelly fried meat platters, organ meatloaf. And we're back. Okay, sorry about that. I lost connection again. I don't know what's going on. Uh, not a really nice time to be uh, making videos, but uh, I've been, uh, you know, holding off on it for a while now, so. I need to do it no matter what, no, no matter the connection. So anyway, cabbage rolls here. Uh, also, we have a um, considered national dish. We also have that over here. I'm not a big fan of it, but uh, still a lot of Bosnians do eat it. It's called sarma. Kind of similar to sarmale here. So yeah, usually you, you you take cabbage and you roll up like meat in it. And that's why yeah, you get uh, sarma. Which was actually brought over from the Turks during the Ottoman times. Oh, but Romanians probably that's why. mostly being Christian, stuff it with pork. So that's kind of a unique Romanian twist, I guess. And things get even more twisty once you learn about the people. Which brings us to... Thank you, Art. You're welcome, Barbie. Send me home. All right. Bob second. The Romanians have a saying. They are a okay. Latin island in a Slavic sea. The position of Romania on the map, literally everyone surrounding them is not like them. But we'll get into that later. First, Romania has just about 19.5 million people and has seen a 16.2 population decrease since its peak in 1991 this is sad. Million. The majority of the country, at about 88%, identifies as Romanian to whatever degree, whether it be one or both parents being Romanian. After that, the second largest minority group would be the Hungarians, and more specifically, the CK people, found mostly in the Transylvanian area. After that, the Roma, Romani, often called Gypsy, come in at third place at around 3%, and the rest are a bunch of other groups like Ukrainians, Germans and general Europeans, and very few non-Europeans. Now, even though they are part of the EU, they are not part of the Eurozone, and they use their own currency, the Romanian leu. They use the Type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the Good. Now, back to the identity thing. Even though Romanians hate being called Slavs, they have to kind of admit Slavic culture has kind of put a major dent in their upbringing and identity. I mean, somewhere around 15% of their language is Slavic-based. On top of that, like most I noticed. Slavs, Romania and Moldova are the only Latin-based Orthodox predominant nations on Earth. Huh. It's like we're backwards versions of each other. How did all of this happen, though? Well, to summarize, the area of what is now Romania was known in antiquity as Dacia, or Dacia, inhabited by Dacians, which were basically cousins to the mysterious Thracian people. History doesn't record too much about them, but they were known for having interesting customs, warfare techniques, Spartacus was a Thracian, and many yeah. of them were known for being redheads. Whoa! Ancient ginger warriors? That's pretty cool. Then in like the second century BC, the Romans came in and pretty much destroyed everything and made it their province. Moved a ton of Romans in and Romanized everything. Uh, uh, they didn't hold like all of what we know as uh, <clears throat> Romania today. They ho they held a small part of it. And that's where, hence the uh, uh, Latin language came. It was more like the southern part and parts of like the Transylvanian Alps. But over there with Moldova and Moldavia, the plains, uh, usually the... Uh, the, the Romans never went over like the uh, Carpathian Mountains. So basically, at just certain points of the uh, of Romania, they started to colonize, and where we get the Latin-based language uh, today, they built cities. You know, people moved in, and they mixed with the local Dacian people, and you get what kind of like where Romania is today now. Of course, afterwards, the the Gepids came in, then uh, then like the the Huns came in, then the Avars came in, then. Uh, of course, you had Slavic migrations, the Bulgars passed by, and wow, <laughs> it had, there were so many chances for Romania not being Romania from all of that happening, but they are what they are today. Oh, well, 
This is essentially how the land of Romania became the easternmost point of Latin influence in Europe. Over time, Slavic tribes migrated south after the Roman Empire mm -hmm. fell, but they avoided the Carpathian and Black Sea coast, which they knew were Latin strongholds. After gaining ground in the Balkans, this essentially isolated Romania from every other Latin-based area, which kind of explains how they became a distinct people group. So that's basically how it all went down. Then we get to the CK people, the second most populous minority. Yes, that's how you pronounce it, CK. Basically, cousins of the Hungarians. These people are steadfast and holding on to their culture, language, and claim over the Transylvanian region, known as CK land. They even have their own flag. Today, it's not such a big <laughs> they deal. Muslim once every so often, Crescent you might get a little star. bit of tension between the Romanians and the CK. On top of that, Romania was a they previous probably kingdom aren't, but that ended I'm in 1907, with King Michael I being the last king mm -hmm. until he was forcibly abdicated by the Communist Party. Context, Hannah wanted to be the king of Romania in this skit. Well, good to have you visit, your highness, but are you sure you don't want to seek asylum here? No, no, thank you. I shall return. My people will listen to me and respect my title. Very well. Safe travels. Yeah. Sign this paper saying you won't be king anymore. We'll kill you. Well, I tried. And today, there are actually three people that can technically claim heir to the former monarch of Romania. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Kingdom now of it's Romania. Time for Random <laughs> Hannah with culture stuff. Now with Romanian culture. It gets a little intense because they are saturated in myth and legend, especially with major life events like birth, marriage, and even death. Some of the traditions include things like for a kid's first birthday, it is common to cut a lock of hair from the baby and keep it forever. Also, people might give offerings to the fate fairies by leaving gifts on the windowsill. Romanian weddings are also pretty extreme. It's common for the bride to get kidnapped by friends of the family for a silly ransom. What's During with this kidnapping? kidnapping? The bride just kind of hangs out and drinks at a bar or something. A lot of cultures do it. some YouTube videos about that. But then the girl's like happy at the end. It's weird, okay. And there are so many other small customs and festivals, like the Midsummer Festival, where women dress in white. The Kaloi Anol, rain-making ritual performed by children after Easter or a hot day. Christmases are very important to them. In Romania, they go buck wild, making as much noise as possible, wearing costumes, sometimes having whips, and carrying staffs to ward off evil spirits. There's also that festival where the dudes wear women's clothing and masks with loud bells and they parade to ward off disease and evil spirits. On St. Andrew's Day, it's common to eat garlic and spread garlic all over the house to ward off the evil spirits. Vampires? Yes, as well as the stigoi, which are like Romanian zombies. Superstitions, charms, and so on are heavily ingrained in their upbringing. In fact, they even have a 16% black magic income tax for anyone that works in the profession, such as fortune telling or witchcraft. Now, every region of Romania has their own folk costumes which generally look pretty similar but you'll notice they all kind of have like a Balkan Slavic, Slavic yeah. influence style. Romania also has four Nobel Prize winners and they are known for quite a few inventions such as insulin, car wheels that are positioned oh, on the nice. inside of the car's frame, and the fountain pen. And now to Keith's music segment but actually guys Keith is not here he's in Germany. Will he make it on this episode of Geography Now? Stay tuned in the next two seconds to find out. Nope. Yeah, no, Keith is still not here. He, um... Oh, okay, sorry I'm late. Did I miss anything? Noah's back. No, actually, uh, since Keith is not here, why don't you take the music segment? You got it. Let's get this party started, He's shall prepared. we? Okay. Oh, yes. Oh. Here we go. As an isolated Latin people group, surrounded mostly by Slavs, traditional music in Romania has always had a noticeable Eastern and Balkan European twang to it. Stringed instruments are probably the most preferred form of musical device and even for percussion. This stringed instrument is commonly used. Some of the most common folk styles include Doina, or the Shepherd's Longing Song, and the Song of the Elders. Each region has kind of their own version of these styles. After World War II, they really started to dabble outside the folk and classic genres and started the Musica Ushuara Romanesca period, which means easy Romanian music. Georges Inescu, being one of the prominent figures during this time, regarded as one of, if not the most important icon of Romanian musicians. After the fall of communism and opening up to the world, Romania dabbled even further with so many new brands and singers emerging into genres like rock, pop, house, and underground, and disputedly the most prevalent genre, electronic. Today there are about 10 major nationwide electronic music festivals found all over Romania, like Noise, Untold, and the biggest one, the After Hills Music and Arts Festival. Fun fact, you know that Numa Numa song? <laughs> yeah, that takes you back about 10 years, right? That band called Ozum was actually a Moldovan band with one Romanian guy. But, I mean, Moldova, Romania, they're like basically the same people. Yes, you are. You know you are. You're basically one of us. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> yeah, but... Uh... There is no but. You are one of <laughs> us. And there's lots of other Romanian musicians and bands, but we'll mention them later. Maybe the one day. People say. <laughs> now, it's back to you, old barbs. 
here we go. All right, so in the quickest way I can summarize the history of Romania, Dacia, Roman Empire, tribal migration, Middle Ages, split into three, Ottomans, Austro-Hungarians, Russians came in, World War One, country unites, things look good until boom, World War II, lose parts of what were formerly parts of the country, satellite USSR, Soviets banished royal family, really bad communist years, dictator deposed, democratic elections, European Union in 2007, and here we are today. Some famous people you guys, the Romanian geography people, suggested we mention in this episode include, full disclosure, I'm gonna probably mispronounce everything, Klaus Iannis, Gika Hadji, Nadia Comaneci, Simona Halep, Christian Mungiu, Cornelio Poromboyu, Ilina Stase, Ina, Alexandra Stan, Marius Moga, Sebastian Stan, that one was easy, Jeez. Dustin Hoffman's parents are from Romania, Stan Lee's parents, Sergiu Nicolescu, nice. Gopo, Amza and Oana Pelea, Dem Radulescu, Jean Constantine, Andrea Esca, Angela Georgiu. I am so sorry, Romanians. I can't. I, I, I can't. Neither but can anyway, I. So Romanians, I'm not going to try. <laughs> a lot of friends that the Romanians have made over the years. Let's find out who they are. I'm going to guess Moldova. When it Moldova. comes to friends, Romanians <laughs> have a saying. Their only best friend is the Black Sea because they never tried to invade them. In all seriousness, though, recent changes in the Just wait till the dolphins drastically changed the way arm. they operate their diplomacy. For one, after dropping communism and becoming a member of NATO and the EU, of course relations with other EU members have grown since the 2000s. And although they are one of the less wealthier EU states, their GDP and quality of life has risen thanks to heavy investments and loans offered by the EU. This, of course, has strained relations with Russia. Romania was once part of the Warsaw Pact that essentially cooperated with the former Soviet Union until the early 90s when everything broke apart. Not only that, but the whole conflict with Transnistria in Moldova only heightened tensions between Romania and Russia over time. Serbia is kind of like the only neighbor they have that they are pretty cool with, as no major conflicts have ever arisen between the two. Romania also sides with Serbia's dispute in the whole Kosovo conflict. With Bulgaria, it's kind of like till the Serbia suffer episode. together as the lowest ranking We're gonna be talking a lot. in terms of quality of infrastructure. They're not even allowed to be part of the Schengen or Eurozone yet. As Danube River and Black Sea neighbors with a shared history of dealing with Ottoman Empire years, they do as much as they can to keep each other afloat. For what it's worth though, Romania loves to meet up with their distant cousins, the Italians and Spanish. When they meet up, it's like something just clicks and they get each other, even though they have completely different clothing and customs. On top of that, they have a huge crush on France, but France is like hardcore friend zoning them. Before English oh, became the second most common spoken language, French was actually I'm way sorry. more popular. They copied lots of French style architecture, they adopted French yes. words, and they pretty much copy pasted the French constitution. When it comes to their best friends though, almost every Romanian has told me, it's not even a friend, it's not even family, Moldova is basically the same as Romania. Moldovans are essentially the a closest lot poorer. people, their closest brothers and sisters, they basically speak the same language, Moldova just has a little bit more of a Russian influence, they love sharing a glass of wine, and no matter how detached they are from the rest of the Latin world, at least they have each other. In conclusion, with Romania, you do get the land of electricity and myths and legend, so much folklore, yet so many crazy things that have happened that made them into who they are. Stay tuned, Russia, the big guy, is coming up next. That one's going to be fun to do. I'm going to be talking for hours on end on that one. <laughs> but anyway, let's get to the flag in three, two, one. The flag of Romania, which is almost the exact same as the flag of Chad, except I think the Chadian uh, flag is slightly lighter in color. But seriously, I think uh, Chad should uh, probably think of getting a different flag or putting an emblem on it or something because they're very confusing. So I, be I believe since the Romanians, uh, the Romanian flag is technically older, the Romanians have the right to keep it and the Chadians should change it because I really don't like flags being like the exact same everybody welcome back to flag slash fan friday hope you like the romania episode get a geography now t-shirt at geographynow.com it's just the logo very simple that's it so as you know there's the part where we talk about some of the small mistakes we made in the video or we talk about the things that didn't quite make it into the video for one i know that every pronunciation i made was pretty much wrong maybe the c made a ch sound maybe it made a s sound i don't it, eh. i know i said portuguese was the most difficult latin language i think maybe romanian takes that spot actually in the physical animation the dance Danube what about French? French is pretty Romania, fucked. It <laughs> up and goes into the Danube River Delta. Speaking of the river, we actually showed the Serbia side of the Gates of Iron, the communist satellite mm -hmm. map. That was uh, wrong. That was uh, that was like a. Uh, let's see, Union of So. Hang on, let me check a look at this map. Oh, uh, what is this? I didn't even notice that at first. Like, why is Egypt? Why is Arabia, Persia there? I think this was like the uh, ambitions. Why is there a? A Byzantine like double-headed eagle there. Is this like third Rome or some fantasy map? 
fan fiction map. I don't know what that was. But otherwise, we didn't really talk about the automotive. I didn't even notice that first. That Romania ah, that shit. We didn't really have a lot of time for that. L car. <laughs> point, Romania had the smallest currency bill ever. A 10 bani banknote. It was legal tender. The film Borat was actually filmed here. Or at least the parts that were supposed to portray Kazakhstan. There is a forest mm -hmm. in Romania that actually has sand dunes. Romania ranks as one of the top, sometimes even number one in home ownership percentage at around 95%. Actually not hard to buy a home in Romania, especially considering that they have a really high population depreciation rate. Lots of open real estate. I'm just saying. And I know we said yeah. there's a lot of haunted places in Romania, but we didn't even scratch the surface. There are so many more. I also forgot to mention that Romania has really high 4G speed. And there's a lot of other things I could have mentioned. If you I knew that. <laughs> that I forgot to put in the episode, please write it in the comments. Otherwise, we gotta move on. So without further ah do ooh ooh ooh. <laughs> Ah, it was so fun filming this episode. I just want to give a huge thanks to my friend Jason. Seriously, this is the guy who taught me how to do those motion graphics and animations going all the way back to my first episode, Afghanistan. I did all the animations in that episode. I have to say, honestly, Jason, if it wasn't for you, I might not have even launched Geography Now. So I actually owe this guy a lot. Anywho, moving on to the flag. The flag is a tri-band of three separate colors, blue, yellow, and red. Very similar to the flag of Chad, which is essentially identical. No, it's a little darker. a darker hue of blue. It's also similar to the flags of Moldova and Andorra, with of course the coat of arms in the center of each, and with slightly different hues in the colors. The shortest way to summarize it, usually the colors are said to symbolize two things for each color. The blue standing for liberty, as well as the historical region of Transylvania, as the blue comes from the coat of arms. The yellow standing for justice, and the historical region Wait of Wallachia, which had a white flag with an eagle on it, but over time, the white changed to a yellow tint. And the red standing for fraternity, uh. and for the historical region of Moldavia, as it can be found on the flag of Moldavia. Yeah, the three historical regions of Romania played a huge role in developing them into what they are today. And of course, throughout their history, they had a lot of different flags. They actually started off with a horizontal tri-band. Then the communism years came in, and then a national emblem was put in the center. Hey, Keith, I'm actually filming right now. Can I call you back in like five minutes? Cool. All right. Give me a sec. Anyway, <laughs> funny <laughs> story though. When they had a revolution to end the communism years, their flag was technically the tricolor, but with a hole punched in it because they cut out the emblem. And sometimes you might even still be able to see this flag at protests. It's like a symbol of defiance. Of course, after the fall of communism, the emblem was dropped and they got a new one, which brings us to the coat of arms. The coat of arms contains a blue shield and a crowned golden aquila, which is like a golden eagle symbol that dates back to Roman times. Mm. The sword specifically standing for Stephen the Great, the mace standing for Michael the Brave, and of course the cross representing the orthodox religion that the majority of the Romanian population adhered to. The crown specifically alludes to the steel crown of King Carol. In front of the eagle lies another shield with images divided into sections that represent the historical regions of Romania. In the first quadrant, the golden eagle representing Wallachia. In the next one, an oryx representing Moldavia and Bukovina. Then you have the lion and Trajan's bridge representing Oltenia and Banat. You have the black Aquila Eagle and the Seven Castles, as well as the Sun and the Moon, representing Transylvania, Maramures, and Krishana. Finally, you have the Dolphins, representing Bessarabia, Budyak, and Dobruja. Of course, prior to this, they had the Communist Emblem. It looked like this. And of course, prior to that, they were under the Kingdom Years. They had a Kingdom Coat of Arms. It was pretty similar, you know, it just kind of had more, like, royal imagery, you know, like, there was a drape, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, Romania, that's kind of how it is. It's like a conglomeration of three major regions, plus those smaller sub-regions, all smashed into one and that's Romania. Moving on, that's about it. So now you know what time it is, it's time for... The end of the video. So anyway, sorry about the internet issues on the, and also sorry that I was pretty late on this uh, episode, but as soon as Russia comes out, I will be doing it as soon as I possibly can. So we'll, we'll, I'll try not to uh, procrastinate too much on these. So anyway, thank you all for watching and as always, take care.